So I was working on my slides this weekend, and my seven-year-old son came up to me and asked me about what I was doing, and I explained to him, and he got very serious look in his face, and he said, Dad, are you going to fail? So I'm like, I'm talking about what I'm passionate about, so I, I really hope not. I'm passionate about protocols, and it may sound very dry and boring, but protocols are the, the boxes that every application has to use to move anything around in the Internet. They're, they're a critical structure of how everything behaves and everything that you interact with. So going back 60 years, the person that created the computer had this really silly quote about there's only going to need to be six computers for the entire United States. And this it seems absurd at the face of it, but every time I think about this, I think he was right. I, I see all of these million square foot grid-hungry data centers, and our, our digital lives are being dangerously centralized in these data centers. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of work to make things decentralized or more distributed. So I fought this centralization battle 10 years ago with, with instant messaging, and it's done pretty well. We got it to decentralize. I'd like to take it further, and I, I care about, my passion is that I want people, what people share and create, to be able to be open and free to everyone. I want to be able to get this stuff out without any boundaries or barriers. This is what the internet looks like now. And this is what an application developer has to deal with. And they're forced into certain architectures. They have to deal with these, these crappy network devices out there. They have to deal with committees telling them what to do, with telephone companies telling them what not to do. And they have to deal with other lazy programmers. And I'm often <laughs> one of those other lazy programmers. So the principles of a good protocol it starts with equality, where your mobile phone and the server, they can do anything they want. They're not limited by the protocol and what role they play. They don't know that they're talking to another phone or a server. Everybody is on an equal playing ground, as well as freedom. The freedom to not have somebody tell you what you can and can't do, or to control you or to stop you, as well as the freedom to be able to be centralized, decentralized, or distributed. Looking at the protocols that are available, these boxes that applications can build on right now, I loosely graphed them on the freedom and equality scales, and they tend to cluster a little bit more on the Dr. Evil side and a little bit more on the you can only use a server side to talk this stuff. So these protocols are important because the applications built on top of them are limited by what the protocol can do. And you look at this, this space here, and there's so much empty space. There's, there's a lot of power down this corner, but it's controlled and it's limited in what it's be doing, and it's very centralized. I want to take things out to the side and up. And there is so much more potential for incredible applications to be built to take this stuff out of these central towers, these ivory towers, and to put it in the hands of the people and let everybody control and build things. Telehash is a protocol that I'm working on to make it easier for applications to do this. Because right now, it's actually very complicated. And even Telehash is as simple as I can make it, but it's complicated. It's completely open source. The protocol is actually in the public domain. It's built on JSON, which is technically just very simple Legos to put your data in. And it's built on UDP, which we're kind of backed in the corner with, with that picture of the internet. It's the only option we have in order to move this data around equal, equally. And there are rules about how you connect with each other. And these rules are based on Catamlia, which is what BitTorrent uses. It's been very well proven in how to move data bits around very efficiently. So, I can show you a little bit about what it looks like, and I apologize, it's, it's very sort of scary looking. There's lots of numbers and lots of hash codes, but it's important to recognize that this stuff is, is critical. These are very important things that wrap around and provide the facility for the application to be much more powerful. Uh, if you're technical, there's some beginning stage implementations. Uh, feel free to come jump on the site, telehash.org, and, and help me out. Simple command line demos. It's, it's pretty easy, and I want to make it easier, but these are murky waters, and you're probably going to be bit by it a few times. You're like, oh my god, this is crazy. What can you do on top of Telehash? You can actually build anything on top of it. You can build anything you want distributed. You can build instant messaging much more distributed. You can build presence and music and VoIP and games, and everything can be. So if you're not a geek and you're not going to go out and code stuff, I, I just ask you to have an open mind to talk about this stuff, to tell people about it, and show up on the site every once in a while and experiment. Because this is going to be a, a multi-year process to get this stuff more distributed. Uh, you can get a hold of me anytime. I, I'm definitely not a rocket scientist. I'm going to make a lot of mistakes, and I need everybody to help point them out and <laughs> discover if what stuff works or not. So thank you.